Hi everyone, welcome to the next Earth Science Review video. This is going to be in the Wedgel topic still and we are going to talk about erosion today. So what are the different things that cause erosion to happen? And to start off, it would be good if you knew what it was. Erosion just means that the material or sediment that's already broken down from weathering is now being moved from one location to another location. So it's like the moving van of Wedgel. So there's different ways that the sediment can be moved. Um, we're going to go through the couple of different ways. So the first way is from gravity. And as you can see, you might have seen a picture like this. This is called an avalanche. It's when a lot of rocks and snow and material, could be snow, falls because the sediment is all broken up and loose. So it gets pulled down a mountain from gravity. So this is a way to move a lot of material in a short amount of time. So gravity is going to be our first main cause and you can get a landslide to occur an, or an avalanche. But essentially the whole idea is that it's taking sediment from one place and moving it into another place. And there is ca there's causes to this, but there's also effects of what happens because of the sediment moving. So if you look in this picture right here, all these trees here are moving down here and actually all this soil is loosening up too, which is gonna create different things to happen. So normally when you have a landslide or a rock slide or an avalanche, these rocks are all angular and sharp because they're all broken up and they just fell down a mountain. So these are called mass movements. And the reason it's called a mass movement is because it's a mass amount of material moving. So they called them a mass movement. So this is landslides, avalanches, things like that. Um, and it's due to gravity. Bunch of pictures of landslides, it's just land sliding down a mountain. So there's a couple different forms of mass movement. You can get a landslide or an avalanche. This happens really quick and they're normally really devastating as you could see in the pictures. You could also have slumping. This is like a really slow landslide. You could just see it's really, really slow. Happens over like weeks. It's not an instantaneous thing, but it's just the ground starts sinking down like this. And another one is called soil creep. You can see the ripples in the ground. This is just the land moving really, really, really slowly over time. Now, soil creep, landslide, avalanches, mass movements, they will sort of, if all the material is moving down the mountain, it's going to expose the roots of plants like this, which is going to make the ground very unstable. So like this tree is not going to be stabilized anymore because the ground moved out from underneath it. It doesn't have that nice tight soil anymore to keep it in spot. So this is actually um, one of the effects of a landslide. Picture of an avalanche. All right, so that was gravity. The second way that erosion can occur is from wind. And normally you're going to get a lot of wind erosion in an area that's, you guessed it, windy. So areas that are the most windy are like deserts, areas that are really dry or arid. Arid means dry, remember right here. Hot areas places with not a lot of plants. Um, this is a desert. You could see these hills. These things are called dunes. Um, dunes are pretty interesting. It's a mound of sand, essentially, that it starts out with. So if you have a mound of sand like this, and you have wind, and the wind blows one side of the sand, it creates this ramp effect. So the particles on this side get pushed over the other side, and you get this shape. So if the wind comes from this way, you get the sand going up the hill and then it like drops off the cliff. So this is the shape of a dune if the wind is coming from the right. It's going to be the opposite shape if the wind was coming from the other side. So if the wind is coming from this way, the dune would look like this. It's a gradual slope on the side that the wind is on and then it's just like falls off like a cliff. And obviously in a real desert, the wind is going to shift directions all the time. So the dunes can actually, they're dynamic things. The dunes change what they look like. They're just mounds of sand and the shape is affected by which side the wind is coming from. So sometimes if you have a big boulder and it's windy, you could see these little tiny holes in the boulder. Those are, that's from abrasion. Remember rocks hitting other rocks. The wind, part, the sand is blown into the rocks and creates these little holes. Okay, so let's see if you can get this dune question. Which diagram represents a side view of a sand dune most commonly formed as a result of the wind direction shown? So if the wind's coming from that side, which shape would the dune be? A, B, C, or D? 
Well, I just did two examples of this. The answer is C. The gradual slope of the dune is near the side with the wind, and then the, the steeper part is the side opposite. This would be the opposite answer. This was actually, this would be the correct picture if the wind was on this side. This is totally wrong, and this is totally wrong. All right, the third agent of erosion or cause of erosion, remember we did gravity and wind. The next one's water. There's really only two facts you gotta know about water, and we already talked about them. Water rounds and smooths the rocks as it moves it because the sharp edges get chipped off. This is from abrasion. So generally, rocks that are in water are rounded. If you have a river like A compared to B, if you see A, A has a lot of twists and turns. If the water has to slow down to make the turns over here, this is actually going to be a slower moving river as opposed to a straightaway, which would be a faster moving river. This is the same thing in like racing. If you have, or yeah, racing for anything, honestly, if you have a straightaway, you can hit the gas and just keep going in a straight line. If you have a bunch of turns, you got to slow down to make those turns. So A is going to be a slower moving river and B is going to be a faster moving river. And generally, if the river has a lot of turns, it's normally older in age. The older the river, the more turns it has. The younger the river, the straighter it is. Rivers, when they flow, they carve out V shapes in the valleys that they flow through. So you can see in this picture, here's the river down here, but look at the big V. See the V? That's a sign of a river. So rivers are the only thing that cut out V shapes. And I sort of remember this by this. If you spell the word river, V shaped valley. The letter V is in there. So this is an area that looks like a V, so we can assume by that that a river once flowed through here and it actually dried out. So you could see this was the path of the river and it opened up in some sort of lake or ocean over here, whatever this was at the time, but now it's all dried out. If you have a river, this would be like if you're underwater and you're looking down a river, the fastest moving water is gonna be in the center right here because it's not hitting the air, it's not hitting the bottom of the river, it's not hitting the two sides, it's not getting slowed down at all. So the fastest moving water is always in the center because it's not rubbing against anything or getting slowed down. So if you have a river, some of the rocks when it moves, because remember we're talking about erosion, the movement of stuff, some of the rocks will tumble along the ground and their sharp edges will get chipped off. And then a lot of material is actually really, really tiny and microscopic. So it's actually suspended in the liquid. Like you wouldn't want to drink river water, right? Because it would have all gross dirt particles in it. Like even though you can't see them, you know you wouldn't want to drink river water. That would be not good. So there's a lot of particles suspended in it. Number five. Deposition is affected by particle density. Deposition is dropping off. On the grid below, draw a line to show the relationship between particle density and settling rate. Settling rate is how fast the particle sinks. So think of it, is a high density going to mean it sinks faster or slower. You could sort of cheat and think high density is heavy, heavier. If the particle is heavier like a boulder, that's going to sink faster. So the settling rate, which is how fast the particle sinks, the higher the density, the faster it will settle or sink. So this line's going to go like this. You can think the lighter the particle, the longer it's going to take to sink. If you drop a boulder in your pool, it's going to sink to the bottom really, really fast. If you drop um, a little pebble, it'll sink really slow. The last agent of erosion that we're going to talk about today is called a glacier. It's a giant mountain sheet of ice. So what a glacier does is it actually moves because it snows and then the sheet of ice gets bigger because you're adding snow to it or it will melt and the sheet of ice will get smaller. And essentially it's like a bulldozer. It just 
goes over all of the sediment and it picks up all different sizes of sediments from like boulders all the way to silt and clay. So the big thing about glaciers is that it picks up particles of all sizes and they're unsorted, meaning they're all different sizes. That's what that means. Remember, sorted means the same size, unsorted means all different sizes. And what it does is it takes them and the, all those different particle sizes get frozen into the glacier. So if you have the, the glacier here, you're going to have all the particles frozen like in the bottom. So it's going to turn into the bottom of the glacier if it moves this way. Say this is like a mountain. If it moves this way, as the whole glacier moves, all these little particles will be dragged along the ground. And it's going to be like sandpaper because it's all gritty on the bottom with all these particles, right? So if you imagine sanding wood, what happens to the wood when you sand it with sandpaper? It gets all smooth. That's what a glacier does to the ground underneath it. It smooths and polishes it. It also leaves scratch marks because the sediments drag along the ground. It would be like if you wore cleats and you dragged your cleats in the mud, right? You would have these tracks that are left behind like this. So big thing about glaciers, they move a lot of material. They create parallel scratches, which are called striations. That's what these things are called. These are called striations. And they leave the ground smooth and polished. Okay, so if you see those scratch marks, that actually also tells you which direction the glacier is moving, depending on the scratch mark. So it could either be that way or that way. You can't prove that necessarily by just the scratch marks. Um, glaciers sometimes leave these giant boulders places. Like there's nothing else that can move a boulder that size except a glacier. Wind is not going to move it. Water is not going to move it. Gravity is not. Gra actually, gravity can move it. That was a glacier though. Glaciers create U-shaped valleys. See that nice U, that curve? So rivers create V-shaped valleys. Glaciers create U-shaped valleys. There's another U-shaped valley. And yet another U-shaped valley. And this is a glacier. This is a mountain glacier. But there's your U. Okay? So those are the agents of erosion. I made you guys a little cheat sheet here at the end of the video so you can sort of get your thoughts together. Um, these are the four causes of erosion, mass movement, wind, running water, and glaciers, and the couple facts you should know about each of them. So you might want to pause the video and just jot these down. It would be really, really helpful, I think. All right. Well, thank you for being here. I hope all is well, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.